Hello! Welcome. This should be part 30 of Let's Play Dark Souls. Finally made it to Big 3 0. Um, pray <laughs> for not quitting YouTube. Um, anyway, uh, we're back here because um, I do actually want to tune a spell here. Um, so instead of Fire Orb, we're going to use uh, Gaslight, yes. Because as you saw, we got a very dark area up ahead. I um, also want to take the time because there's a lot of things to talk about. Um, one of the things we picked up, if you noticed, um, I believe it should be keys in there. It's anything. This guy here, the right of kindling. Um, there's a few things to talk about here. There's actually a lot of things to talk about, right? It's, uh, there's pinwheel, there's paladin leroy, there's the right of kindling, how it ties all together. But um, I'm going to try to do that as best as I can while I try to not die. So the uh, the right of kindling. Let's start with that. What it's going to let us do is that it's going to let us kindle. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> nice start. Nice way to miss that jump twice now. <laughs> uh, good news is we don't have to be human anymore. Again, we can just get our souls right away, so no big deal. But anyway... I get, I get, I get. Alright, not a strong start. So, right of kindling. <laughs> what it's going to let us do is... It lets us kindle our bonfires more than t just 10 Estus. Um, Bonfires can go all the way up to 20 with the right of kindling. So you will have to burn a humanity each time you want it to go up by plus 5. But with the right of kindling and enough humanity, you can just, uh, yeah, you can really overdrive those um, bonfires now. So that's the, me the way it works mechanically. Uh, lore wise, it's still the same idea is that the right of kindling, whoever has it, is able to, uh, is able to have better control over bonfires or something. Um, so yeah, now that we have it, we're good. Uh, because we got it after killing Pinwheel. Pinwheel was the uh, last person who owned the right of kindling for some reason. Um, historically, it was just known to always be under Nito's domain for some reason, which is why it's in the catacombs. Um, exactly why he has it, um, I'm not sure either. What exactly it actually is, I still don't even know. <laughs> point is it's like this special treasure um that makes you better with bonfires right so paladin leroy let's talk about him um he is associated with the way of white and them being like the church who is um part of like petrus and maria and those uh, other knights that came down who uh we'll be seeing more of in a bit here but um yeah they're the way of white is obsessed with finding the right of kindling so they specifically um, they send their undead members to the catacombs or to Lorjin to go to the catacombs um, because they're so obsessed with finding it. So um, before we talk more about that, let's uh, let's prepare for the darkness here. So uh, before we use cast light, which is obviously going to make things brighter, uh, if you found yourself a skull lantern and don't have magic, you can just use this and it'll sort of light up the area around you. But you have to put it in your shield hand and you have to... Uh, actually like raise your hand to use it so definitely not the ideal situation so what we want to do is use cast light gear which is a sorcery so you do have to use a catalyst for it and so for a time that'll leave this little ball of light above our head and show us the way so um yeah let's uh, press onwards and try not to die because if you were totally navigating the dark um because you're not guaranteed a uh, skull lantern you do have to do this first part um, just totally in the dark, which is extra painful. But, uh, yeah. This, the Tomb of the Giants is the, uh, late game part. So now things are gonna not be so easy like they were in the catacombs. Um, no necromancers, by the way, so don't worry about that. Um, I don't think, can we just drop there and get that item? Oh, no! Oh, wait, we're alive. Barely. Ah, the arrow got me. Down, I go. Okay, well, hopefully my souls are still <laughs> higher up. Um, this is the other annoying part of the Tomb of the Giants is that uh, this is the closest bonfire. Yeah. So um, I'm going to cut back and meet you back at the entrance. Okay, and we're back. Uh, we're going to cast our light again. Show us the way. Um, and we're going to not go for that item <laughs> this time. I forgot that um, there was a ladder which will actually take us there. Uh, later on, so we'll just we'll go the normal route first. <laughs> Try not to die. 
and hope that our souls didn't fall all the way down because those are all of our pinwheel souls so um yeah the way of white they um they're like the church of lordran um i think i talked about them in an old old episode but yeah just think of them as like you know the, the catholic church is a good comparison i would say um you know just like they're holy they're all about god and this and that so they don't like undead uh let that be known um they're known for undead hunts where they literally just uh hunt people down this one's also kind of creepy because um if you notice it it's a body but it's like in a rib cage which um to me kind of implies that um a giant ate this guy <laughs> which is kind of brutal um but yeah uh we are in the tomb of the giants this is where giants get buried um just keep that in mind uh so yeah they hate the way they hate the undead so when members of their church started being undead um they started being kind of like hypocritical and rather than like you know purge them oh when we're undead then that means it's okay and we're chosen is like their logic <laughs> so uh paladin leroy was actually the first wave white guy that was undead so what they did with him is they sent him on a pilgrimage i think it's called to Lorgen, where they say go find the right of kindling and it's almost kind of like a uh I guess let's get an example. Kind of like an Avatar The Last Airbender when they send uh, Izuko to go find the Avatar. Um, that's spoilers that he did end up finding the Avatar. Um, not that's a huge spoiler because you find that out in episode one that the Avatar is real. But at the time when he was sent on the journey, his dad thought the Avatar doesn't exist. So it was kind of like a, yeah, just get out of my face kind of thing. Um, that's kind of what the church does with people going on right of kindling quests. So that's actually what Petrus and Rhea and her friends are also doing. They're here searching for the right of kindling. Um, now we found it for them, so now we are the kindlers, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of how that all ties together. And then Pinwheel himself. Oh right, yeah, let's let's uh, take a minute and talk about Pinwheel. Uh, so as you saw, it was like a three-headed, robed figure. Um, specifically, what he is. Those three masks are the mask of the father, mask of the mother, and the mask of the daughter. Uh, we don't know exactly, but the theory is that in some way, the father, its it was a family of, you know, one child, and they all ended up doing, like, too much necromancy, or just the father was the one that did it. And some say it's because the son died and he was trying to resurrect him, but basically he ended up um, staring into the abyss too deeply and got consumed with some nasty uh necromancy magic and now they're just this gross frankenstein um mess of three people and he hides it all under a robe so he is the master necromancer he's the one that all the other necromancers sort of report to and uh yeah he kind of runs the catacombs but um he's also the easiest boss in the game so uh you know go figure um so that's um that's pinwheel yeah uh one last thing i want to mention is that a good strategy early game is that you start with nothing, right? Like, you just get into Lurgen. The crow drops you off. You go to the catacombs. You uh, you rush through. You pick up the Great Scythe. Then you uh, then you go to where you can summon Paladin Leroy. You summon him. Then you rush to Pinwheel. You have him kill Pinwheel. You get all those souls. Then you warp back to the bonfire. And then you go to Vamos. And you use those souls to buy enough Titanite um shards to uh, upgrade your weapon to the great scythe to plus five or any weapon you like really and then you use that one green type knight shard if you remember that we picked up and then you use that to take it to uh to make a flame weapon plus one and you can get that right at the start of the game and then that will do that is a very powerful weapon to have that early and um there's a video actually of demonstrating this which i'll link here um and i tried it once really fun you just stomp everything up till like quaylog and uh yeah Highly recommend it. So anyway, moving on. Uh, right here is Patches. Uh, let's talk to him and see what he's about. Good day. You look reasonably sane. What are you doing in the catacombs? Are you a cleric or something? Uh, make sure you answer no here. No? Really? Hmm. Then I'd have no qualms telling you. There's a fine stash of treasure right down that hole. I found it first, but well, we're friends now. I'll split it with you. In any case, have a look. It'll shimmer you blind. <laughs> See, I'm really glad that the cast light just ended because you can definitely tell the difference. He's a he's a bit of a pale boy, and wow, with the cast light, it just completely 
<laughs> just overrides his face to just be a white blob. Um, but yeah, we can get a good look at him. He seems very trustworthy, right? He says that we got some treasure for us down here. So yeah, Patches is a fellow who is in the business of manipulating people, so um, we kind of fell for it. Uh, but yeah, he's a, he's an interesting character. Uh, I actually like Patches. Um, I think uh, I'll talk more about him once we meet up with him again, because we obviously survived the fall. Um, but yeah, he did this to a Proud Knight, he did it to another Proud Knight. And right here is where you can actually find a Skull Lantern, you'll be guaranteed it. So if you did, if you didn't find one and you don't have cast light, then you have to do this. Now, as you saw, cast light is temporary, and if it had went out while we were in a fight, that could have been bad. We have one more option, which I'm gonna showcase for like how to use light. Right, so you either use the skull lantern, use cast light, or you just put on the sunlight maggot, and there we go. We have permanent light. So <laughs> take that game. We don't have to deal with the uh, eternal darkness. Uh, that being said, it still does only illuminate about five feet around us, so still a dark area. Um, but yeah, up ahead here, we're gonna see some familiar faces, and here is that girl. You're no hollow, are you? Thank goodness. Please be careful. There are two fierce hollows not far from here. They were once brave knights, my former escorts. Who would let such strong spirits be hollowed so? Heavens, is there nothing, nothing at all to be done? So yeah, if you remember her, and I was just talking about her, um, she was here looking for the Rite of Kindling. When we saw her with her friends originally in Firelink Shrine, um, it was the th her and her two friends and Petrus, they went down here. Then I believe a few episodes later, Petrus alone came back saying, how, oh, the maiden got lost in the catacombs. Um, well, this is where she's been. She's been hiding here, and her two buddies have gone hollow. So we are going to go and put them out of their misery, first and foremost. And here they are. And these guys are being somewhere. Okay, so, oh, oh, he blocked just in time. And they are clerics, so they can heal. But, yeah, they, uh, they ain't got much against a dead knight, so... <laughs> So yeah, that fight can be kind of tricky if you don't or bum rush them like I did there, because um, like if you if you can't kill them really quickly, they'll they will fall back at about a third health and just use heal, and they got like five or ten heals on them. So it could uh, it can become a bit of a war of attrition there. Thankfully, it went pretty smoothly. So let's uh, see what she has to say now. You banished those two hollows, did you? It pains me to think of the trouble my failings have caused. I am certain that both Vince and Nico are grateful to you. Thank you so very much. Here, these belonged to them. You deserve them more than I. I am certain that both Vince and Nico are grateful to you. Thank you so very much. So, uh, yeah, at this point we've uh, rescued her. I am certain. Yes, yeah, so she can say that. Um. Now, I wish the game made it more clear, but we've, um, you think of it as if we've actually rescued her at this point, and she's gonna appear back, uh, not in Firelink Shrine, but actually in the Undead Parish. So, once we're wrapped up with this area, we'll go say hello to her properly. Um, but in the meantime, while we're down here, let's, uh, see what else we got. Um, I think this lower area doesn't have much more to it. We wanna go up that hill that we just saw. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so this is where we fell down. It's easy. It's really, really easy to get turned around here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think where we want to go is this way. Oh, this is one of the ways to go. Mm, let's just see where it goes. Oh yeah, so here is um, a new enemy type. It's uh, I don't know. I think they're called like bone towers or something. But um. Yeah, they're uh, they're not too bad. They're pretty simple to fight. Um, you know, in a large group, of course, they can be dangerous. 
now I think. All right, let's, let's go up this way because there's there's another way down there that we want to see. I think uh, this might be the way out though. In fact, it's almost certainly the way out. But I don't know if it's like the secret way out. So yeah, we'll find a, a hidden wall there, which takes us right here. And ooh, there's the bonfire. If we continue along this way. And that takes us back to Patches. So let's uh, confront our uh, our new friend here. Oh, you. I. Well, let's just calm down. Talk about things. I did you wrong, but I didn't mean it. These temptations, they can, well, overcome me. You know what I mean, don't you? Please, forgive me. You and me, we're. Uh, so it actually doesn't matter what you say here, um, but I like to say yes. Oh, brilliant. A second chance. Wonderful. I had a feeling you'd understand. I did. But uh, if I were in your shoes, ooh, who knows what I'd have done. But now we're friends again, eh? <laughs> So yeah, Patches is a very uh, divisive character. Um, personally, and this is more of a my own hot take, but um, I don't mind Patches. Uh, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna head back to where we came as it is because I wanna go down the other route. Um, but yeah, Patches. I feel like once you forgive him, like in game, like that's it. He's he's he is now our friend. Uh, once we're actually done with this area, he'll be at the Firelink Shrine as a merchant to sell us stuff, and he'll have some interesting gossip for us. But um, yeah, we truly are friends. So. Now, I personally kind of forgive him because, you know, he, you know, can you blame him in this world? It's a very harsh world. You do what you got to do to survive. Um, he kicked us down, but he did tell us about the treasure. There was treasure. We found souls and uh, the lantern, which we got to keep. And, um, yeah, he's like a funny, interesting guy. So <laughs> why not, right? Um, oh, yeah, so up here is where I want to go um, because when you go up here. Oh, this was just an item. I should have gone here first. Um, yeah, a bunch of these guys will spawn. These guys drop white titanite chunks, by the way, so if you're in need of those, just uh, throw on the gold serpent ring and farm them in this specific area, because then you can use the bonfire that we got to, um, that's, that we saw to just quickly respawn. But yeah, patches, I like him. Um, I end up trust trusting him more. Maybe I'm just a trustworthy guy. I'm going to get uh, burnt by it. I don't recommend getting so friendly with people like that in real life who uh, betray you like that. <laughs> but in Dark Souls, it's it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, so let's not run straight off. And let's see this way. Ooh, down there. Yeah, okay. Let's go to the bonfire first. And then we'll go down there. So I believe we can just drop down here. Yeah. And rest at the bonfire. Now I will level up at this point. Okay, we got one more into vitality after this. Yeah, our health bar has made a lot of improvement, as you can see. Um, yeah, the bonfires. Oh, I probably should have rested there earlier. Now that I think about it. <laughs> um, and I think uh, the way forward in the level is going to be this way. But before we do that, let's go check out that little area that I just talked about. So if we make our way this way, past the, past the cave, um, first let's just explore the surface. There's an archer up there shooting at us, shooting those giant arrows. Not as bad as the ones in Anor Londo, but definitely uh, still pretty big. Oh, that's another one. Okay, I think we gotta just, oh wait, we can go up here. Okay, let's see what we got. Take out the archer. Oh, I think this is where we fell down. Originally, yeah. Nice. Oh boy. Oh wow, we one shot the archers. Very nice. Let's get up a ladder. Ooh. Oh man, we are just barely far enough. Okay. Um. Ooh, we're gonna have to slide down. Oh, hello, two guys. Okay, that's one. Thankfully, you stayed in the corner like a good boy. All right. Um, is there actually anything here? 
Let's see. Oh, I probably have to drop down early on there. Um, oh, oh wait, no, we got a letter. Perfect. Um, ooh, this takes us all the way up. And is this actually like the beginning of the level? It is. Interesting. Come up this way. So I'm just curious where this goes. I don't know if I've ever actually been up here. Um, ooh, that takes us to the soul. Nice, nice. Um, oh, and then there's the beginning of the level. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we did see that item sort of dangling. I wasn't sure exactly how to get there, but apparently this is where you go. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's also get this item. Ooh, some more eyes of death. Very spooky. And now we can get that last item. Actually, no, two more items. Is this one another large soul? Got a lot of souls. And then finally, another soul. Perfect. Um, ooh, we do have to drop. Ooh, all right, not too bad. Heal up. And now we get to go to the fun part. <laughs> so down here, right? Um, yeah, uh, we got we got a few enemies. Um, <laughs> thankfully, it looks like I've already got their attention, so I might be able to get a plunging attack here. Definitely get plunging attack. So let's uh, take these guys out. Okay, ow. Right, this is not going too badly. Ow. Oh no. Dang. Didn't consider that other one. Should have healed. Got greedy. Uh, either way, that that was that went smoother than I thought it was going to. So I think we do have a fighting chance. Uh, let's head right back there and go for round two, because there's a very important item in there that we want. Well, we kind of want it. Uh, we don't really need it, but depending on what you're going for, you may really want this. So <laughs> therefore, I want it on video. And we're right here. Perfect. Okay. Hopefully, our souls aren't down there. Um, like they are, but not a big deal because uh, we recently spent our souls. So let's get the plunging attack here. Take ooh three out, nice. Ow. Okay, so that went a lot smoother. Let's get these souls. I think there's only two left. Oh, nice. And wow. I think we got the counter hit on that one guy, and yeah. Well, that was easy. <laughs> so we got our Soul of a Brave Warrior there. And then down here is the real prize. As you can see, it's a blacksmith, which means it's another ember. A large divine ember. Yep, so if you want to max out a divine weapon, this is where you get it. Um, yeah, uh, I won't waste a homeward bone since we're so close to the bonfire. Might actually use a soul item and just level up again. Because, like, 17,000 is, like, in that range where, like, I'd probably not be happy to lose those souls. <laughs> I'd rather spend them. Because uh, up ahead, things are going to start to get tricky. Um, so it's a very annoying enemy type, which I don't like, but you're going to have to deal with it. Um, so let's uh, use some items, some souls here real quick. Oh, yeah, we got, we got a lot. Let's go with a large soul of the Brave Warrior. That'll probably get us enough to level up. Um, probably not, actually. How much do we need? We need another 5,000. Okay, we'll use one more smaller than that, maybe. So, large soul of the Proud Knight. Oh, what? Oh. Alright, sorry guys. <laughs> I thought, thought for sure that'd be enough. But uh, one more will definitely be enough. All right, there we go. So level up and let's call it an episode with our next up vitality. Um, next up, I'm probably gonna get endurance up to about 30 or so. And then in the final stretch of the game, we're gonna just pump into intelligence and faith. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for now. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you had fun like I did. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Take care.